you do. So Jane and Henleys, we're going to find out what NLP is and what it does. But let's get an answer to one of our questions right now, because we're talking satellites and Barbie uh, between now and one. James in Emerson's Green asked, how do you tell the difference between a star and a satellite at night uh, in the night sky? Surely some stars are just as bright as satellites. Well, let's speak to Tom Snelling, who's the project manager of the satellite team at the University of Bristol. Tom, good to have you back on the programme. Hi, John. Thanks for having me back. No, no, no problem at all, because you're part of this, obviously, this project that's happening right here in, in, the, in the city of Bristol, all about satellites, and I know you've been in, into the, you know, the, the, the belly of the beast, haven't you, in Europe? Yeah, it's been really exciting. Back in Easter, we went out to the European Space Agency in Belgium and did a big testing campaign out there with our satellites. So, yeah, really exciting things going on. So, um, yours is quite a, a, a small but rather important satellite. I mean, you, you sort of think if you're old enough, Tom, uh, you sort of think Telstar, these great big balls, you know, um, that um, might fire lasers at you if you had a, you know, a, a suit with no collar and a white cat in your lap, um, that you've got these big satellites and these teeny tiny satellites. The big ones, are they, are they, you know, lit up? They've got little flashing lights all over them or not? Well, they will have some lights on them, but the main reason that we can see them is because they reflect light. So there's okay. lots of shiny things on satellites, and that's lots of things to do with why, uh, how we control how hot they get, because white things reflect heat and black things absorb heat. That's why sports gear is often white. Right. Um, and it's these sort of light, particularly white coverings on satellites that light reflects off, and that's how we see them from Earth. So I suppose that's to protect the satellite because you don't want it absorbing a load of heat because um, you know not a very hostile environment and if it gets the full force of the sun without the benefit of an atmosphere it's going to fry, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So space is really harsh. So on if you're in deep space and you're facing the hot side of the sun, um, you can be as hot as 200 degrees Celsius. But then equally, the other side of your satellite facing deep space can be as cold as minus 200. Like so it's a really, really harsh atmosphere and environment. So if you see something that is shining in the sky, it could be reflect like the moon, because that reflects sunlight as well. You're seeing, how do you know the difference between a satellite and a star? Yeah, it's really interesting. So as you said, there's sort of two types of satellites. So one's what we call a man-made. So that's things like the International Space Station or satellites such as the one the university building. Yeah. The other type would be what's called a natural satellite. So that's something like the moon or the Earth. And these are just things that orbit other things in space. Um, what's really interesting, I think, is that so most satellites that are man-made that you can see from Earth are in what we call low Earth orbit, or LEO. Right. This basically means that they're really close to Earth and they're orbiting around really, really fast. So one example of this would be the International Space Station, which I think most of the people listening would know what that is. And just sort of context, the ISS is around the size of a football pitch and it orbits the Earth once every 90 minutes or so. So that means you only get to see it for about a five-minute window above, above. So one of right. the easiest ways to tell the difference between a star and a satellite is by if it moves or not. If it's gone within five to ten minutes, then chances are it's probably a satellite. If not, then it's more likely to be a star. Okay, so if it's moving quickly, it's not a star. If it's, you know, it's sort of as you would see the night sky progress you'd see the stars move, um, it's going to be a, a star, or indeed it can also be Venus, because you quite often see Venus um, as we get into next month, don't you, as we wake up in the morning? Yeah, exactly. Um, and whilst everything will move in the sky over sort of days, weeks, because yeah. of the way that the Earth rotates, if everything's staying in the same place relative to all the other dots in the sky, then that, that's generally a good idea and consensus that it is a star, in fact, or in fact a planet, as you say, because yeah. planets also reflect light. Tom, great to have you back on the programme. Thank you for answering James's question. Thank you very much indeed. Take care, Tom. Tom Snudding there, part of the project, uh, more the, the project manager of the satellite team at University of Bristol, where they're doing work on this specific satellite at the moment. Uh, uh, James, also good to remember that an astronomer can explain um, stars and planets and start to give you understanding on the universe. An astrologer just gives you a broad brushstroke of how your day could possibly turn out and whether you're going to find love or not ish 
BBC Radio Bristol. You look like you're loving life in Bristol. Oh, too right, mate. This is just a gorgeous spot here. Just by an Ashton Court estate, you wouldn't believe you were so close to the middle of Bristol. This is such a great celebration and we can all get together and experience such great culture in Bristol. Definitely. The community is here, then we're going to have a wonderful time. It couldn't be more local. What do you give to the city? That's what makes you from Bristol.